I'm here at HP Discover with John Treadway, and cloud obviously is, is a ever-growing and, and evolving part of the IT business. Yeah. As somebody who's been working in the cloud space for quite some time, what are the trends that you're seeing? Yeah, it's interesting. I've been uh, doing uh, cloud computing ac uh, work actually since the start of it. I was an alpha tester of AWS's uh, EC2 offering, which is the, the compute side. Uh, back in 2006, and uh, it's really actually, you know, the last 12 years have been pretty amazing, but more recently, it's really evolved quite a bit, and it's gotten very interesting. You know, we're well past the point of, you know, should I go to the cloud, or is the cloud relevant, is the cloud valuable to me? It's now to the point of, how do I execute on a cloud program at scale? I've tried it, I like it, I've got some things going, but uh, I'm not sure how to do this uh, fully, uh, to make sure that it's compliant, I can get my biggest workloads on it and all of this. And what people are realizing is that one of the biggest hurdles isn't security, it isn't cost, it isn't the things that people talk about. The biggest hurdle is um, people. It's the um, people side of the equation, people, process, and technology. The skills, the knowledge, the understanding of how to do this right, how to secure it, how to make it run uh, at scale just doesn't exist in most organizations because IT in the cloud is very different from IT on-premise and traditional IT. It's just a different beast, all the automation, DevOps, infrastructure as code, different processes, different technologies and tools that you're going to be using, and uh, fundamentally uh, the biggest challenge and uh, quite frankly the biggest opportunity is that it forces you to upgrade your organization when you move to this model, make the organization more agile, nimble, and, uh, and innovative along the way. So it's a forcing function, but if you don't do it, then you're not going to have a very solid program to stand on. So, so how do people overcome that, that uh, people challenge? Yeah, so this is actually, this is um, you know, straight up organizational change work, right? So uh, you need to make sure that you understand what the roles are going forward, what your organization needs to look like, how you break down the silos between the various groups. You know, the, I have a storage group and a network group and a server group. I need to think about how I'm delivering services in a more comprehensive way as opposed to in these, these siloed organizations. I break that down, I need to train people on the new skills. People need to get trained on using AWS. They need to get trained on using Azure. It's new. Like any new technology, there's training available, so we help the clients through that process, understanding what skills they need to have, training and certifications. Uh, there's also um, a lot of people start with this mindset of, well, it's, it's cloud, it's easy, I can do it with a credit card, how hard could it be? And they can quickly kind of do a fair bit of work uh, without actually knowing whether or not they're doing it right. So what we have to do is also is back people off the concept that they're actually competent at something when they think they are. But what we've learned along the way is that it's a lot more challenging, it's a lot more complicated than I think people realize it. I used the analogy in the past, uh, uh, I was doing work on Wall Street and uh, it was a new domain for me and uh, the analogy was uh, about six months and when I started, I said, I don't know anything about this. i got to learn it. And I, I spent six months really heads down learning it. And I said, I, I've got it now. I really understand it, right? And about three months later, I realized that I didn't know anything. I had spent the last six months and then nine months learning as much as I can, but I still had so much more to learn. And I think that's the, the value of experience that something like you know, Cloud Technology Partners, what we've done, 500 plus engagements, lar large enterprises, premier partner of AWS, and uh, a big partner of Microsoft and, and Google as well, is that we have not only the book knowledge, but we have the experience. We have built and deployed environments for people at scale in the public cloud for the last seven years as a company. Um, and uh, so what people need to do is uh, you know, bring on somebody, could be us, could be another partner of, of, of uh, HPEs, that's fine, but um, make sure you get help along the way. And, and getting people off of that concept that they actually know what they're doing uh, and, uh, and, and and making them feel like they actually do need help, sometimes that's the, the biggest challenge, right? Um, there's some level of skill, but there's a lot that they don't know. And that challenge is just not knowing what they don't know. Not knowing what you don't know is always, is always a challenge. It's always a challenge, right, yeah. So that we do a lot of work helping our clients through that process. And we actually have, in order to structure this properly, right, we have a maturity model that hits people, process, and technology as part of this, and we actually have our clients assess themselves, where you think you are on, on all of these factors, and the people ones are the most important. There's not as many domains, if you will, on the people side of this. We have 10 domains that we assess against. There's two of them that relate to the people, but they're the most important. If you don't focus there first, 
everything that you do on the process and technology side is just going to take a lot longer and cost a lot more. So we get people focused on that first, uh, the training, the education, the certifications, the cultural change, and then we, uh, then we uh, you know, drop into the, to the technology. Um, there's, a, there's this old saying that uh, uh, culture trumps strategy, and this has uh, been proven out time and time again with our clients. If you're not ready to be there in your mind, it doesn't matter what tooling and technology you put in place, people aren't going to use it. So GreenLake, of course, is a big announcement here, the hybrid cloud piece of GreenLake yeah. uh, here at HP Discover. How does, how does solving the people problem and GreenLake hybrid cloud fit together? Yeah, it's actually interesting. Um, what GreenLake hybrid cloud allows you to do, one of the benefits is that, uh, yeah, your people need to change, and, and there's a, a lot of work to, to change the, the organization, the technology, and the tooling, but that takes a lot of time. So what HPE is able to do now with um, GreenLake Hybrid Cloud is actually accelerate you onto the cloud and use the fact that our people are already ready, right? Our technology is already mature. Our processes are already well, well documented and proven. So we can run that environment, become the IT operations side of uh, your cloud program uh, very quickly and get you accelerating the value. One of the things that we found, it's really interesting, that people and that transformation process, there's a lot of clients that we start with that say, I really want to learn, I want my people to know how to do this. I'm going to build a cloud native organization. And we get about you know, a few months down the road with them, and they come back to us and say, I, I realize that I don't have the people that I need to have here, and I'm not going to be able to go hire them, I'm not going to get the budget to do that, and it's a lot harder than I thought it was, so maybe you could run it for us instead. And then at some point in the future, we'll help them, if they want to, get to the point where they can take it over and run it themselves. So what GreenLake Hybrid Cloud does for our clients is, is accelerating that time to value, getting rid of the, what we call the agility bubble, the time and the cost that it takes to get to that point where you can actually leverage the cloud and gain the agility that you want in IT. Um, our processes are pretty mature, the tooling is really, really strong, so we keep you secure, in compliance, and we manage the cost of what you're doing, because uh, if you're not careful, uh, public cloud costs can get uh, pretty much out of hand if you don't have good control yeah. over it. And so we manage that for you, we manage all the things that are really, really critical for you to be successful, but at the end of the day, aren't the ways that you drive value in the business, right? It's not analytics and insights, that's what you need to be focusing on as a business. Uh, the IT operations, but it's important, it's critical, it has to be done perfectly, uh, it's, got, it's got to run really, really well, but it's the same operations that you're doing that everybody else is doing. Why would you want to invest there? Why don't you let us do that? And that's another part of the argument. We do have a lot of large clients, uh, particularly in financial services, that absolutely want to and will own the process themselves, and so we take them th through that long-term transformation process. There's a whole bunch of other clients where Really being in that business is not what they want to be. They want actually somebody else to handle it for them, and that's what we can do with uh, GreenLake Hybrid Cloud. So you, you let the business have their expertise, and your expertise is, is kind of managing the, the back-end systems that allows them to yeah. focus on their expertise. Yeah, we use the term undif undifferentiated heavy lifting. It's hard work, it's heavy lifting, and if you do it right, you're no better than anybody else. Right? You're not actually getting ahead of anybody. It doesn't help you be more competitive, enter new markets, and all of that, having that skill in-house. Not saying that you shouldn't have it, right? It's not an argument against having it. It's just the argument that if you are, um, if you're thinking about where you can add the most amount of value with a limited set of resources, a limited number of people that you have available and a limited budget, in most cases a declining budget, um, where do you want to spend your time and effort, right? Maybe it should be on um, the backlog of net new innovation projects. Maybe it ought to be on how you can support the business entering a new market or uh, make the sales process faster and cheaper and easier to execute on so you get more efficient as a business. Those things aren't inherently driven off of the fact that you've got good infrastructure. Good infrastructure has to be there. It has to be managed well. But you have to focus above that layer if you're going to generate any value for the business.